Welcome everyone to another episode of Price Targets with your host Bitcoin Jack. Welcome back. It's Monday, not Sunday. I'm, I keep struggling with, um, on the one hand, a little bit of a mental challenge. Um, and then on the other hand, my, my physical health is also struggling, I think, as a result of it. Um, so my bat for um, ditching out yesterday and um, here's, um, here's the video anyway. So let's see if we can get a little bit of a grasp of what's going on on Bitcoin. And um, I want your attention first for ECOS. They're sponsoring this content. They're a new regulatory compliant exchange and they have pretty much everything that you need. They're still growing and um, I'm happy to uh, to have them as my sponsor. So if you appreciate this content, please consider uh, clicking the link in the description below and the, it's which is the same as the one in the watermark which um, you know will help me keep going during this um, saga of price targets and make the sponsor ECOS happy too so thank you ECOS for sponsoring and let's dive into Bitcoin it's um it's beyond me why Bitcoin has not made a new all-time high yet and um it has me partially worried. Um, you know, we've been visiting this resistance quite a few times. It's an established resistance. In my opinion, it should be weakened by now and somehow it's still holding up. Um, the black line right here, the $61,250 is the, the level that we came up with um, ever since price moved away from the 28000 level. Uh, beyond the 42,000 level and it just seems to keep on resisting um, the price to break through it. So we talked about this level like right here on the Wednesday um, last week and I mean we do have what I hoped for and what I anticipated for. We did go back inside the first orange box back inside the range, which was capped by the old 0 0.68786 up here. Came across the second one, had a breakout, but then got rejected again, retested the orange block, and now we tapped into um, the 61 level again. So basically, um, that should be bullish. And then we got to figure out what's going to happen in two days on uh, Wednesday, where the Coinbase is going to list um, their um, their stock on on the Nasdaq, and there's a there's a few things to say. You know, on the one hand, I believe that the incentives for all parties involved are to pump crypto, um, a bullish launch of Coinbase's um, equity on on Nasdaq is probably a good thing for crypto and crypto pumping is probably a good thing for coinbase's listing and um, if coinbase goes live at a hundred billion dollar valuation um, in my opinion that seems a lot that that is already kind of bubbly but you know the float of equity that's going to hit the exchanges is just going to be a fraction of all the stock so you know, it could really see um, a kind of supply-driven um, rally, which probably pumps that value beyond that hundred billion dollar valuation. If we fully dilute, considering for older um, shares that actually exist, right? So it's going to be an interesting situation because the, obviously there's going to be profit taking happening again. But let's say the float is ten percent. I think it's it's. I don't have the numbers here. Um, let's let's say it's ten percent. Um, that should you know in a kind of bubbly phase of the market give opportunity to to pump it beyond it it, it its intrinsic value. And I I I think a hundred billion is already beyond intrinsic value. Um, but if they're going to try and do something that we've seen with a lot of crypto projects where, you know, there's this, there's a launch and then they just launch a fraction of everything available, that should, you know, theoretically um, allow for price just to, to get to absurd valuations. And 
So the incentives are there to to pump the coin um, equity equity token Coinbase's token, and to pump crypto just to create this you know final bubble extension um, before everything sees a larger um, pullback. So you know you know you know I've liked to um, to look at for example equities uh, S and P five hundred. You know, which is breaking out of its kind of channel it's been following since November. Uh, arguably, even started interacting with it a bit earlier, back in you know September and even June last year. And I'm of the opinion that if we can hold above this, that's going to initiate um, a rather large melt up into what I probably assume is going to be a, a giant blow of top on equities and it would make sense for bitcoin to kind of follow suit um we have the dollar index right here which is going to retest um the previous range so basically this is the previous range it's going to retest um the range low that it broke back into um if it's going to keep on selling off that's probably going to be a catalyst for equities to continue up higher too so i'm not really sure what's going to happen i think this story needs to allude to the fact that maybe everything is not as bullish as we would like to see or hope and um that we are in some kind of overconfidence phase where everyone thinks that the coinbase listing is gonna make things moon Obviously, this news has been around for a while, and um, it's kind of hard for me to believe it's going to be a sell the news event based on the fact that, you know, in my opinion, Bitcoin has been consolidating for over three months now. And even if you don't accept that notion, then we've been consolidating since early Feb, which is Feb, March, now it's April. That's um, a decent two months of time, too. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, that it is impossible for this to be a local top. Um, the reasoning I see a lot on Twitter is that, simply put, people say, okay, this doesn't look like a cyclic top, this doesn't look like the cycle top, therefore it will break out. Um, and that's kind of a, a fallacy in my opinion, probably based on position bias and everything else. Because the simple reality is that um, this doesn't have to pump upwards simply because this doesn't look like a cyclic top. Um, and it could very well you know, start breaking down um, and everyone who's been buying pretty much here is then going to get flushed. And... I think it's important just to to realize that um, a massive possibility that the 61 level remains respected, that price is going to come down. And then we got to talk about where do we see invalidations or where do we kind of, you know, got to be careful. So the one thing to do is probably still you know, remain vigilant at resistance. It's been resistance for a while. It's keeping up. Eventually, it's going to break, and that's probably a moment to start increasing exposure again. At the same time, um, reducing risk at resistance is probably going to help you buying dips and you know avoid liquidations um, and be less salty about Bitcoin not doing what you want it to do. You know, and eventually, if it breaks out and you sold some at resistance, fine. You're probably going to make a bit, a little bit less money, but at the same time, right now, funding is sky high. So just sitting here with price not moving is costing you a shit ton of money. That's just my two cents on it. So basically what I'm looking at um, for an exit is once we get down here at the orange block and lose it, including this trend line, um, that's probably where I want to start reducing and um, even perhaps get a hedge in once we retest the red line just under 60k or just above it just around it so basically essentially if price starts doing this that's where i'm like well 
I don't know, not liking it, reduce exposure up here. If it then breaks out, probably get back in. Um, but my biggest worry is that once we get up here or just start puking straight from here is that, you know, everyone's probably expecting something to happen around this red line, around this level here. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't dismiss the idea that it would just completely raid the entire range that we've been ranging in, get everyone stops, liquidate everyone who's in, 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 you know, above two X exposure and come back into the breakout bl demand block that, um, managed to get us past the old 42 resistance back in Jan. Um, it kind of sounds bad. But that's just the reality of, you know, if this just doesn't manage to break out. Um, if it does manage to break out, sure, I still think it will go to 69, 73, and eventually 90k as our next targets. And um, I just don't want to be blindly bullish here, even though everything I look at right now, as it stands right here, kind of looks bullish, seems to be bullish. Um, I just don't want to get drawn into absolute thinking, which is going to cost, if I stick to it, it's probably going to cost me money once we actually start breaking out. Um, so, you know, ideally we don't see a daily close above 58K. Uh, once we start closing the daily below 58K, that's kind of my initial sign to start worrying. Um, for now, I'm holding on to my positions, and um, if we do break out, I do believe that. Um, let's see if I can find the right chart. Yeah, here's that old chart. We're right at the apex of this um, this ID, so this can literally, you know, go that way, and it can go that way. If it goes this way, I think this is the support, and all the levels down here are going to get stopped out probably in a very vicious, very, you know, fast type of way. And then you probably then start the rally to, um, to the final fifth parabolic wave. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what I'm worried about. Maybe it's not going to come down all the way down here, but that's really, really where I'm going to be waiting. And then, um, if we must break down, I want to be hedged and protect the, assets I have kind of thing that's my summary of it. Um, so the too long didn't read kind of sounds like, Hey, why the hell has Bitcoin not broken up yet? Um, maybe there's just too much resistance and everyone's buying that resistance and we're going to have a complete flush of, well, first of all, this entire zone probably trap enough people way lower. So I'm not saying I'm bearish. I'm just saying that if we see this scenario play out, that's how I'm going to play it. From that point on, I'm probably going to be very cautious, very, you know, start to become slightly bearish and hedge myself, not get any like significant short exposure, but get cash positions and um, stop paying funding and wait until we see some kind of structure that makes me believe that we have flushed all um fomo out of the system eth you know i think i've said it on twitter above orange good below orange bad um if ETHUSD loses orange, which is around, well, let's, let's say just slightly below $2,000 per ETH. Um, at that point, I'm pretty positive that we're at least going to test 1550 and possibly lower. So, you know, that's kind of, um, in line with the, you know, what I'm seeing on, on, um, on Bitcoin. Bitcoin just fails to actually get going, which is the same here. If this fails to get going, it's you know going to retest orange. But if it loses orange, 
there's just a lot of way until we find some support um because then basically this entire range becomes our trading range and um there's probably going to be some support here but to really get rid of all the stops at least one must look at the 1550 level um and arguably if this is the range then we may actually see a deviation on the other end of it which is you know a pretty massive correction from here so really um gotta you know stay cautious on eth if eth doesn't manage to you know you start pumping and loses orange i think we're in very bad territory and um that's probably going to be aligned with bitcoin um must not be the case and to the other side it's for me right now it's just a huddle situation um but one must be prepared for the inv inevitable um flushes that you know may occur now or maybe later on and if the market is overexposed right now in a way that you know it's sometimes hard to um predict then you know this might be the situation where that happens and then eth bdc just remains kind of range bound we held the orange block to the bottom and then we kind of got rejected at the range high here um so that again you know is i think i posted this setup on twitter um this retest right here was a short setup and um right now you now in my opinion um this is just a range and um if we can break out of the range to the upside then we go for this target and if we smash that this target but if this comes down here you know um i only want to get long on a reclaim into continuation here um and not bother with it until you know this kind of happens thing that summarizes it um oh no 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 okay so litecoin we talked about it last week um i wanted to have a recess of orange didn't get it i got cooked uh front run whatever you want to call it um it's at this resistance right here and um i think that once it starts to reclaim that um the rally is really going to start as you can see we have multiple confluence of this block right here and then the trend line down here i think that this really is going to skyrocket us if it managed to smash through it into this high and this high right there um but i'm not in it so you know i'm not really sure if i want to play it like that this would have been a great entry with a you know tight stop down here with decent upside targets now right now i'm not really sure um if my risk to reward is there um so i'm just going to leave it at that and um wait if i can see some decent opportunity which i'm right now not seeing it it's at resistance um so i guess we'll have to let this one develop a little bit that's it 20 minutes almost i hope you guys stay safe careful bitcoin can do a lot of weird things from here on out if we do get a break to the upside i think it is hopefully not going to be a fake out and um that we are continuing this bull run into 100k plus maybe even 200k plus over the next couple of months into q into the end of q2 um and maybe q3 but um i don't think that this is going to last very long if we start breaking out here and we're probably going to have a pretty slow q3 i'll be sharing charts on that entire id once i do get um solid conviction slash proof that bitcoin has started that final fifth parabolic wave that's it catch you on wednesday cheers